am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, family. Thank you for tuning in all across the nations of the earth to this week's very special episode of Live Your Best Life with me, Liz Wright. And you guys are in for a major treat. Prepare to be stretched and to pe- prepare to have experience with the Lord that will change your life. It's my joy and my pleasure to have joining me today, my dear friend, who is the founder of Burning Heart uh, Ministry in Wales and who is literally a supernatural pioneer, a man who has such passion for the truth and whose heart completely belongs to Jesus. It's my joy to welcome into the conversation with me the one and only Justin Abraham. Justin, welcome. Thank you, Liz. What what a kind introduction. Thank you. Oh, it's all true. It's all true. <laughs> it's very kind. Oh. <laughs> Justin, was home already feeling Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh, here we go, guys. Uh, I will try and be articulate. Yes. Okay. Okay, Justin, you have just delivered the most powerful message um, that stretched many of us in the in our international mentoring community. But it's so good for us, isn't it? To because yeah. you have been mining the scriptures, studying the Word of God seriously, and doing research for what. 15, 16 years into the pure gospel of Jesus and to understanding the gospel the early church understood. So can we jump off there? Can I ask you, can you give us an an understanding of the gospel that the early church knew, how they saw God and what had happened? Mm. Yeah. Well, obviously there's different streams, but most of the streams had the same agreement that God, they were trying to look for a word for God. Even Paul, he kept saying, "Will may the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus and Holy Spirit fill you. And this whole idea of the Trinity, this incredible revelation of the Trinity came on the earth because Jesus, you know, we, we'd obviously seen the Father Abba in the Old Testament and we'd seen Holy Spirit, we'd seen glimpses or hidden shadows of Jesus. And then suddenly, boom, Christ, the spirit of Christ becomes embodied in Jesus and includes us in his relationship with the father and says, our father, that this species is being defined by this beautiful, beautiful, unlimited love that's between the father, son and spirit. So the early church were were Trinitarians and they had a word for this. And by the fourth century, they'd come up with a word called perichoresis, which is a beautiful word. I mean, imagine this, they're trying to describe God and they use this word perichoresis. Now, peri means circular, corine, choresis means dance or choreography. And they saw this vision of God not being a lonely Zeus character, but a a God that's including creation, including us. And And Paul had it. Paul was a Trinitarian. He said, in him we live and move and have our being. And they had a radical vision they included even animals in this dance. So you see in the Franciscans and yeah. in the Celtic saints, they would preach to animals and have incredible success. You know, um, this St. Bernard, St. Anthony, people like that. They, they were, there are whole stories of villages rejecting the gospel, but them going to the, the lakes and rivers and preaching and all the fish. Wow. There was one case where thousands of fish came to the surface and the whole region was transformed. And there's times wow. where birds, flocks of birds would actually come around the saints. And I think the reason they saw these kind of phenomena is because they didn't see God as being distant. They saw the Trinity as including us in this beautiful. And, did you know, it, what the fruit of it was art. They drew these Celtic crosses like the Celtic saints. They 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 raised the dead even they even raised dead animals you look at the celtic saints sometimes they would raise dead animals they'd have group dead raisins because they saw life was invading the earth and uh, my passion is to come back to the gospel like paul says in um in 2 timothy 1 10 i believe the verse says the gospel of life and immortality has now been revealed and so they called it the great dance that we're included oh what a lovely way of describing the trinity 
And the other thing is, Liz, they didn't see God as being alone, but as community. Now, the word that they have for this is that God is in celebrative constancy. In other words, God is always overwhelmed with joy in himself, in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, overflowing, and that's what made creation. So what I love about the early church, Liz, is is that they started with a vision of God that was so different from what many of us have inherited. They saw family as being the Mm. community and inclusion as being this glorious message. And that's what transformed the world, really. And my passion is to come back to that because I've seen it too, and I know you have. Yeah, absolutely. A God of love, a God of love, and that the, 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 who, Holy Spirit. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the other thing, a happy God. Yes, so the early yes. theologians put happiness at the core of God. You know, it says in the Psalms, in his presence is fullness of joy and total celebration. Well, Paul yeah. understood this. Paul said in 1 Timothy 1.11, we have, the, we have the, the, the glad message that one translation says of the glory of the happy God. So yeah. other translations say blessed, but blessed means blissful. So they saw God as a blissful being. Now, yeah. that is a very radical different view of God than many churches have today where, mm. where, let's be honest, it's quite solemn, can be a little bit miserable at times. You know, I went into a church once and there was a sign saying, be silent. This is the very house of God. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of religion has to go because that's what's produced death. And God, I think, is restoring in this generation the Pauline gospel. Yeah, definitely. Proper revelation of a new yeah. creation. Woo! Yeah, yeah. A new creation is here. And that yeah. new creation is defined by us being included in yeah. the Trinity, the life of the Trinity. Yeah, it's just glorious. Okay, so when they looked at the finished work of the cross, when what Jesus had done, how, how did they understand it? Yeah, well, again, like I said, there are different streams, but sure, they, sure. they didn't see it as. I the know father. I'm asking you huge questions yeah. here, okay. but I'm I'm so interested because you've done so yeah. many years of research into all this and so much prayer, you know. Well, there's a lot of books on this anyway. In that, one of the things that's happened in the modern age, which we've gone for a very punishing view of the Father punishing the Son on the cross, pouring yeah. out His wrath. They didn't believe that, and the scriptures don't teach that. In fact, it says we considered Him smitten by God. It was us seeing it through that lens. But it says what put him there was our sin. It was our sin that put him there. We killed him and that father was in him, joining him in it. Holy Spirit says it says even one scripture says he was offered in the spirit. So even Holy Spirit was there and all the Trinity are embracing us in this glorious moment. So they didn't have the same theology that we have of a punishment mindset. It was more of a liberation mindset that God came to set us free and include us and define us and, and embrace us and embrace all of what we've got, even our wrath being poured out on them us killing the Savior, Hamashiach, and in that moment, in the worst moment, God swallowed us back where we belong in his son. And Jesus said he's finished and gave up his spirit. And that was the glorious gospel was that Paul said, this is redefined humanity. He said, one died for all, therefore mm-hmm. all died in him. And he saw it. He saw this incredible revelation of in him we live and move and have our being. He saw the wonder and mystery of it. And that love possessed him. Yeah. The whole of his life, he was possessed by love. He was a love slave. Yeah. And it was, he, 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 you can hear it in his letters, can't you? When you're reading them where he's like, he passionately went all over as far as to everybody that he could possibly reach and get in front of to preach the truth. Yeah. You know, that it was to awaken hearts to the truth of what had actually happened on the cross. And now this yeah. resurrected new creation life that we could, ex- that is it. who we are. You're you know? hitting it there, Liz. That's the point of it. Paul saw it as the birthing of the new creation. He saw yeah. this was the moment that the old creation fell apart. The last Adam, all of that Adamic stuff was being destroyed and judged and removed. But God was not angry with Jesus. God was not punishing Jesus. He was in Jesus, with Jesus, unraveling 
all these illusions, unraveling sin and death and destroying it, it says. He destroyed it. Um, he destroyed death in, in, the, in the Greek, it's men kategeo thanatos, which means he obliterated death and all of its effects, making it inactive. So God destroyed it in that moment. But many Christians see it as God pouring his wrath out on the sun. They're missing what's actually happening. That's not what happened. It was the Trinity plunging right into the darkness and letting there be light again and unraveling that darkness with their very body, with their very essence. And when you see it from that, it's so beautiful. It is yeah. so profound and so wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just profound what you're sharing. I can feel the weight of it as you're speaking, Justin. You know, yeah. and what what came to my heart when you were talking then was the uh, when you mentioned Adam is like what you you know the name the meaning of the name Adam, yes. you know, and how we've been restored back to the original blueprint. You mm. know, everything has been removed, all the contamination, all the De deception of separation, the sensation yeah. of aloneness, everything yeah. that was brought in through through the work of the enemy at the moment that humanity fell. I mean, it's just profound and extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah. What, I mean, it's beyond language to adequately describe it, the glory of what's happened. It. And I, I think the real fruit of the gospel should be joy. It yes. should be ecstasy. Yes. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy peace we should see such a radically inclusive gospel where god is so for us that he removed every obstacle he plunged into the darkness and embraced us and he did it of himself it says having found no one else to do it <laughs> this is what i love about the gospel is that he remains faithful when we are unfaithful and it's such a radical vision of god and then you see the celtic crosses that the celts put everywhere you know, these beautiful stones and in those stones, they carved creation all interwoven humanity. They saw the dance. When you look at like Celtic theology and the early church, they saw it as being the invasion of love everywhere, that the whole earth yeah. is filled with his glory. But now we're coming into the knowledge of it and yeah. trees are included, rivers and oceans and nature and the earth's included and, and you can see it at the cross all of it's at the cross because when jesus died it says there was an earthquake so even the earth went whoa like the earth was going woo so like the yeah. earth was like going yay and it went like that the black cloud of all of heaven gathering around the black cloud of his presence and then you see the graves open Yes. So death's destroyed, then you yes. see the saints come out. Yes. So the marriage is back and the veil's torn. Yes. I mean, it's so like, it's, what? I know, it's amazing. Our eyes are opening in this hour, aren't they? Holy Spirit's leading us into all truth. One of the things that blows me away when you look at like the martyrs, you know, the early century martyrs and the the clearly they were living in in out of their union they yes. were filled with the glory of god they were filled with the fruit of the spirit His, you know they were mm. living in states of bliss of absolute bliss yeah. and the power of the spirit even in the midst of being martyred yeah. you know so the gospel they knew was so radically powerful they'd move from one identity to another so completely and the fruit of the presence of god was so evident it's just it blows me away. Right, you can read accounts. Away. You can actually read accounts that were documented at the time where, where the presence of God would be so strong on the martyrdoms when they were doing many, many martyrdoms that people would be joining them and getting saved. Even there's cases of the people who were doing the martyrdoms turning to Jesus because of the glory and the wonder of it. There are cases of the blood intoxicating people, which sounds gross. But these things have happened because they were living in a realm. And that's what we've got to come back to is this yeah. realm of union. Yeah. Union where, where we're delighting in this mystical union that the idea of being alone or forsaken by God is obliterated. And we realize yeah. separation is an illusion. It's a lie that we've yeah. bled into one. And it's, Paul used this word. I love this. And I mentioned it earlier that we are permanently united in the likeness yeah. of his risen life. I okay. love that permanently. Wow. <laughs> wow. Another translation wow. says we were fellow plants in the garden of his death, but now we are fellow plants in the garden of his risen life. So we are plants 
Nicholas, yeah. we've been planted. We are a church yeah. plant. <laughs> <laughs> we've been planted in the garden of his risen life. That's where we live from. And that's why Paul said, rejoice when you have sufferings. I mean, if you look at Paul and Silas when they were in prison and they were in an awful situation, but they, they're in ecstasy. And it says the walls shook, the, the chains came off, the gates opened, but they didn't even try and escape. So when the jailer came, he, he was about to kill himself. They said, don't do it. We're still here. So they were in such a realm. Mm-hmm. That's, oh, my gosh. Woo. <laughs> he, they were the in presence. such a realm that even though it popped the frequency, the frequency right. they were carrying popped the jail, everything opens, but they don't leave it because they're in another world. And yeah. that's, that's the gospel that we have been located somewhere. We are relocated. There's one translation uh, that I love. It says, relocate yourself mentally. Fill yourself with throne room thoughts. You Mm -hmm. know, because we've died, it says, and the secret of our life now is we are wrapped up in Christ, in God. That's Mm -hmm. the gospel. That's the heavy gospel, beautiful, wonderful, intoxicating gospel. That It isn't about a ticket to heaven. It's about inclusion. Yeah. Into the very life of the Trinity. And that's what the early church believed. They saw yeah. it. They saw that in Christ we've been given fullness, that we've been flooded and filled, and we had unlimited access to the divine. And we were in this beautiful relationship with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that made made a very different model of church. It was more based mm-hmm. on family. It was more based on community and feasts. They mm-hmm. had love feasts. Yeah. They had love feasts. They had love parties. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't that be cool if we had love parties, love feasts? We all eat yeah. and worship. And oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that was like the gospel that they carried. And it changed the world. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It totally well, I mean, I mean, world. if you look at it, it collapsed Rome, didn't it? You know, the, the, did. the most powerful <laughs> empire at that time. The radical, <laughs> gosp- pure gospel experience of divine yeah. consciousness constantly and living Come from on. union and governing from that place as well, because we're bringing, we're a doorway, aren't we? We're bringing th- into this realm, the realm of God, the, the kingdom. Yeah. You know, the domain of the king is coming in. Like you just said, you know, that even the prison doors couldn't hold new creation beings, you know, wow. new creation people. I mean, come on, yeah. how big is our God and where are we going? Is this awareness, you know, our consciousness of our union mm. just begins to become our constant reality, our constant consciousness. And I wanted to talk to you about yeah. that as well, Justin, because I know that you have spoken about the different paradigm, the revelation that's coming into us now with regards to the authority that we carry, you know, the governing from union. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Like, how do you move like that? Mm. Well, again, it's all about understanding the gospel that we are seated in that place with Yahweh. Yeah. So when it comes to authority, We can only have authority to the degree we take responsibility. So like Mm -hmm. if you want to change something in the earth, it begins with saying, Lord, I'm willing to be responsible for it in that expanded realm. Let's say you want to govern a city and you hold it in your heart and you say, Lord, I'm willing to take responsibility. Then authority will rest on you for it. Mm -hmm. So what sometimes people do, they try and grab at authority. But if you think of some like, like a policeman, they don't have to grab authority, do they? They're clothed in it. Because right. they've they res- they've taken a position of responsibility, so if we say I'm willing to be responsible to transform education or technology or something that moves you, and the way you know what God's calling you into is you'll feel like a joy and an energy on it. You'll feel like yeah, I'm really excited about education. I'm excited about homeschooling. Then what you do is you 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 go into the presence of the Lord and you ascend into it by faith. And you you talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm willing to learn to govern, teach me to govern. And as you do that, say, I'm willing to take responsibility for over it. You'll find your heart expands. So Paul wrote about this. He said to the Corinthians, my heart is greatly expanded towards you. I am present with you in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So when you open up your heart, you will expand and then God will fill you with the blueprint. The blueprint will come. And he will give you clarity and understanding 
because often people are seeking clarity and understanding, but they haven't taken responsibility for something. So, you know, I don't want to sound complicated on it. It's not. It's like it's you said. Not. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's like when when you've got kids, right? As a parent, you're responsible. So you have authority and then you have wisdom from God if you tap in on how to help them become beautiful and become who they're supposed to be. And yeah. you can do that for a city. You can reduce crime. You can change the blueprint. In our city, God showed us that it had a blueprint for family, that families would gather there. We engaged heaven and we even said, you know, things like, um, there was a big mall. We wanted like a play center in it and there wasn't one. So our small group, we ascended and said, Lord, our blueprint for the city that you've given us is family. And we said, Lord, would you release something in this mall for children? And they ended up taking one part of the car park and they spent like 1.2 million converting it into this lovely crazy golf course with jungles and smoke machines and rivers. And that was a little bit of heaven manifesting, which we'd legislated. And what we found is the more we did this, things changed. So they started a, a, a children's festival in the city and they started calling it the city of wonder. And they did a roll doll surprise thing where all these figures from books were popping out. And what we found is there was a direct correlation between what we were engaging and what was actually happening. So that's the other part of the gospel. Actually, and it does tie into the early church. They mm -hmm. totally believed they could transform the world. Yeah. And they would. You think of Patrick going to Ireland. When he yeah. saw there were snakes there, he engaged and, and said there will be no snakes on Ireland. And to this day, there are no snakes on Ireland. So they yeah. transformed the land. They transformed it. And I think that's where Papa wants us to come back to is a victorious gospel. Yes. A gospel yes. where we're not retreating, we're advancing because it says to the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. As um, you know, as Bill Johnson says, the the the, the kingdom only knows forward motion. Mm -hmm. And we have to have this wonderful idea, like even Jesus himself said the kingdom's like leaven that will work its way through the whole loaf. So Jesus said it's always going to be expanding. Yeah. So I don't know where people get the theology of it getting worse all the time. I totally believe in heaven is an unrelenting force. And we've prayed as well for 2,000 years for it to be on earth. <laughs> and then some Christians are expecting hell on earth. I'm expecting God to answer the prayers we've been praying. Yes, you know, yes, yes. Because he loves us. Yes, he loves yes. us. And who wouldn't want goodness to come on earth? And it says yeah. the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of, of, the, the, glory Lord, of the Lord. Which yeah. And the, the, the glory of the Lord is his goodness. And it says, even in other verses, it says we will tremble at his goodness mm -hmm. in the last mm -hmm. days. That's the kind of gospel that I believe, where we will be like so blown away by yeah. how amazing grace is and how powerful God's love is, even yeah. to regenerate in the human body. Yeah, I think I can yeah. show in scripture that there are many, many promises that one of the signs of this generation will be God restoring our strength like a wild ox. Isaiah mm -hmm. talked about lifespans expanding and they are happening in the natural, but I believe beyond that, regeneration miracles, life swallowing death, organs being restored, life coming back into people's bodies, days of wonder. And that's mm -hmm. what they saw in the early church. Yeah, you know, they, they did. saw that stuff. They did. Well, it's Jesus, isn't it? It's where he, where he taught his disciples how to pray pray let it be on earth as it is in heaven you know that's the purpose of god isn't it it's his heart that yeah. we would and and how do we do that by by living more and more aware of his heart right then living in the experience of our union one heart, one mind, one perspective, his faith, the faith of Jesus igniting inside of us, enabling us to be expressions from his heart, to be, to know what's on the mind of God, and then come in agreement with that, like you're saying, and just begin to co-reign yeah. with him. Partnership. There, come on, Liz. And there's many ways of it happening. Although I mentioned ascension there, sometimes God will God will use you to govern something by just a touch or a word. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a strange mm -hmm. miracle happen in the town here. There was a uh, this this crash barrier, this wall that had been damaged by a car, and it had been like that for as long as we've been here the last year. I walked past it after I'd been praying here in this, the chapel, and I was just full of God. And I said, Lord, I want to undo decay from this thing. I want it to be restored. 
Mm. No one's restoring it. And it's a big crash barrier that's all twisted and and broken. I don't know how it happened, Liz. Two days later, I walked past. The whole thing was restored. The whole oh thing. God. But the strange thing was, <laughs> that this is what makes me think it's supernatural. We didn't see anybody in the area doing it. And they didn't do any of the other barriers that were broken. They just did. The, the, I don't know if that angels one. did it or people did it. But the, the only section that they replaced was the bit I touched. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, that's oh strange, God. isn't it? And that, But something else happened wow. on that walk. There was two other places in the town where people dumped garbage. I pointed at both of them, said, Lord, I want them cleaned up. And th- this one place I walked past, it had garbage the whole time we've lived here this last year. And honestly, the same thing happened. Somebody cleaned them up. Amazing. Isn't that crazy? So Amazing. there's something about governing from a frequency of love and union. I'd yeah. been in spirit. I'd been enjoying my union with Yahweh, engaged in heaven, fully just feeling alive. And that aliveness somehow yes. came out of me through my yes. words. And yes. I think that's where we're going as well, that, yeah, we can yes. ascend, but we can also embody it, that yes. there's going to be a generation that speak like Jesus did, be healed. Yes. You know, he yes. didn't even have to be in the same room, did he, to, yes. to heal no. people? No. He could speak it. And I believe yes. one of the signs of the times we're coming into is the restoration of the power of the spoken word. Yeah. Where Yahweh so possesses us. Yeah. So we're in su- such synergy. Yeah. That yeah. we'll speak things. And, and I'm saying it again, Liz, because you definitely walk in this. I believe youth miracles are going to be a major sign of the times where God yeah. will renew your strength like a wild yeah. ox, it says. It's yeah. It says you'll be fresh and flourishing even in old age. And right. I'm looking for that. I believe there's something. It says he's going to, he's going to quicken our mortal bodies. Right. Well, it's, it's also absolutely, Justin, I mean, it's also, it's like, is it Isaiah 40? Those that wait on the Lord or, you know, in the original language means entangle. Those Whoa. that entangle into the Lord will renew their strength. Right. <laughs> they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Or it might be the other way around. But it's that, it's that, isn't it? It's literally like it, going back to what you were saying, you know, just entangling in the Trinity, becoming consciously aware of their enfolding and infilling. Oneness. and that. Right, we have the spirit of life, the same yeah. G- the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You know, Come is on. dispensing power through each one of us yeah. right now. And Come I agree, on. I agree with you. I do not believe in Whoa. degeneration. I don't, I don't see it. You know, it's like we're a new creation in Christ. The very essence of our being now is divine life, is Christ, as it says in John. You know, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. He's mm. first born among us. You know what uh, you sit in that for a year you know and just <laughs> your mind would just explode and expand i agree with you you know that yeah. there's nothing impossible for those that believe you know it's just we, yeah they, we've got to get ready for just a massive shift because yeah, god yeah. god is moving liz yeah, you know this yeah. Yeah, i've never yeah, seen so many people awakening as now i've been in ministry it's a amazing. long time uh full-time ministry a long time um probably 16 years now. And I've never seen so many people coming alive or having the level of encounters with heaven and yeah. the, the saints and angels, ecstasies, ascensions, but also learning to govern and also just being amazed at God's love. Yeah. So, man, I am so encouraged. There, are, it, this, there is a, an awakening happening right now. There you know? really, there really is. There really is. And you know, the end, the end of the day, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. You know, he, like we were saying, he is the elephant tough. He is creator <laughs> God. We are getting perspective back. You know, are we getting less focused on the enemy? I mean, yes, we need to displace the darkness, but we displace the darkness with the glory of God, right? That's God right. of reigning. The, Jesus died to ultimately to restore us back, right, to relationship, back into, like you said, into the center of the Trinity. Mm-hmm. His dream, we are his dream. We are his dream. From before the foundation of the earth, it was us he was looking at. And That's he's getting fine. his dream, a people that look like him, that shine, that are fully centered in Christ. But, oh, my gosh, Justin, we can talk forever. <laughs> We're going to have to stop. History. It's beautiful. It's just yeah. too much. And I think that's yeah, why you and I amazing. were both similar. We get intoxicated by this because this is good news. <laughs> it's, it's really good news. It's, it's really actually good news. brilliant amazing. news. 
Yeah. And we've got Amazing. to return to that, the good news. That, that that's what the gospel means. It's not a meeting. It's 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 a frequency. It's a, it's a world. It's a realm yeah. of union with the divine that yeah. makes us new creations, new creatures. We've got to discover what are we? Yeah. When, and we, how... If anyone's in Christ, they're a new creature. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Who we are. Absolutely. No, like Paul says, it's no longer I that lives, but Christ that wow. lives in me. Christ that lives in me. Oh my gosh. Justin, <laughs> thank you. We have to stop. Rats. Time's oh up. My gosh. Time's up for now. We'll Time's do part up for now. Two. Yeah, yeah. Justin, we, we love you and honor you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank You're you. just such an inspiration and your message is so full of hope. You know, it's brilliant and we, we need to be stretched right now. Yeah. And so we're all powerful. Hey, as you say, we're all powerful to agree and disagree, but we're still family. <laughs> we still all belong to God. We're, we're still, still stuck together. Creation. We are forever. <laughs> we're still going to the same place. <laughs> exactly. We're just going to love each other while we kind of work through all this mess that's happening now as we unravel from religion. But thank yeah. you so much. You're and welcome. guys, guys, thank you. Thank you for giving us your precious time today as well. I hope you've been really empowered. I'm sure you have. Have the most amazing week. And remember, you really are a new creation. We do agree, we pray, that that truth will blast off in your spirit this week beyond anything you've ever known this far. And you will just get untangled from religion and set free by the love of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See you next week. God bless. Hi, if you really enjoyed today's show and you want to go deeper with Jesus and experience his love and his presence more than you ever have, then I have a present for you, a free gift. If you want to jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and just click on and sign up, then you will receive one of my teaching videos that I have created especially for you that will not only give you a few keys just very, very quickly that you can uh, utilize in your daily walk with the Lord, um, but also I'm going to take you there as well. So it's an activation. So yeah, so jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and you are going to be so blessed. <laughs>